it's been in our culture for, you know, thousands of years. This is very enjoyable and, you know, therapeutic in a way, and calming. So I started when I was 16. I helped on a canoe, just graduated high school, and I was crab fishing at the time, and my uncle pulled me aside and said, you know, do something meaningful. It takes a lot of years to work at it. You know, I've been carving for 12 years now, on and off, and, you know, I still wouldn't say I know enough to do my own totem pole. The head man, Timmy, is working at is, um, you know, teaching us what he knows so that we can do this within you know, a reasonable time frame. It's just a long road, you know, you never stop learning. Never stop learning. If you like accidentally go the wrong way yeah. and you dig too deep, you got to kind of change the line and change everything, you know, bring it down that much more and then you got to rework everything again, which is kind of taxing because everything, you know, even little sections will take half a day type of thing. And This one here is going to be seven months. The other ones that I helped on took like, you know, sometimes over a year, sometimes took two years. When you take the time and actually step back and have a better understanding and appreciation, you can see things have changed and it's coming along very nicely. Poles have crests on them. You know, this one has a raven and an eagle, but if they were gonna do one, say, for my clan, they wouldn't have an eagle on there because that's not part of our crest. Now the reason this one is kind of has a bunch of different crests is because it's for everybody in the village and you know the hospital kind of welcomes everybody so it can't be you know a specific um, a specific I guess genre of crests. For example Billy's an eagle and then he has crests underneath that like he, yeah he has like a five fin killer whale and things like that. For me ours is like the raven represents our clan, we're the raven clan but we have like sub crests, so we have 24 crests, so like a cumulus cloud, serious cloud, we have the, th I think the thunderbird, we have a hawk, we have these, um, we have so many, right? And those could be used on a pole. That's just who I am, I'm a Haida guy, and you know, whatever I do, I guess, is considered traditional, you know, like, it's not the old ways, we're not carving with uh, bone or, you know, muscle shells or clam shells or anything like that now, we got these modern tools and things like that, but our little twist is using the old tradition, using the old form line, the old techniques, which would be, you know, to cut them out in certain ways and to really make them pop. So those traditions are still pretty intact. You know, there's a few people that do carvings and then, you know, a lot of the younger generation does do Haida dancing and singing and stuff like that. Some of the performances give me the shivers and the chills, you know, so I think those times really bring me back to the roots and the old ways, right? Like the singing more does it for me than the, than the carving itself. You know, to bring me back to the roots. Yeah. 